Okay, so this morning we're going to be looking at um, starting to write our scenes. So on Friday you came up with your ideas, um, your play that you could write about um, and really understood the story, what you were going to do. So we're going to have a look at now starting to write it. Okay, so for our spag this morning, we're going to be looking at prefixes. Now, we've been using some of those in the spellings that we've been learning um, this year. So we're going to actually now really break it down to see what a prefix is. So we're going to be looking at prefixes dis, miss and un. Now, a prefix is um, a small couple of letters, a small part of the word, which is added to the beginning of a word to make a new word. So we have what we call a root word. So if we have a look at this as an example, Connect is our root word, so it's our word that can stand on its own um, with, without needing anything extra. We can then add our prefix dis to before it, and when we add those two together, we will have disconnect, which we can see that if you connect with somebody, you get on really well with somebody, and if you disconnect with somebody, you don't really get on really well, we can see that they are the opposite. Let's have a look at the next one. So we've got the uh, root word of take, and we've got the uh, prefix of miss, if, I, if you take something, you might pick something up or you might understand something. And if we mistake, so if we put the root word with the prefix together, we can see that if you mistake something, it is the opposite of taking. You don't understand something and you've not quite grasped what's been said. And finally, with the prefix un, we've got the root word of cover. So if you cover something up, um, you could, um, if you are hiding in a den, you might cover your den up with a piece of um, material. And if we put the root word of un before it, if we uncover, that is the opposite. So that will be, we'll be taking the cover off. So we can see by using a prefix can change this, change the meaning of a word, of the root word. So it can mean the opposite. So we're going to have a look now at some examples and then see if you can have a go soon because dis, miss and un are just a few prefixes that we could use. Okay, so I want you to have a go at um, copying this out to start with just exactly like I've done here. You don't need to put the, the words in the boxes, um, but you could if you wanted to just to make it clearer. Then we're going to have a look. We've got all the root words down the middle. Take, act, appear, play, place, order and track. And what we're going to do is you're going to work through each uh, prefix. So whether this is miss, over, re, d or dis. And I want you to go and put those prefixes before the root word to see if it is a word. If it is, you can draw the line to it to show that actually the root word does work. So, for example, mistake. Well, we know that is a word because if we mistake something, you take something and um, you don't um, really you haven't taken, you haven't understood it very well. Misact, that's not a word, so I won't connect that. Misappear, that's not a word, but you might straight away think of another word which actually sounds similar, which might have another prefix there. Misplay, so if you um, if you don't do play properly. Um, misplace, if you misplace something, that's correct, because obviously if you misplace something, it means you forget where you've put it. And misorder, that works as well, because we misorder something if you haven't put it in the correct order. Um, but mistract isn't a word. So now I've found all the miss, so I've given you the example there. So now I'd like you to go and have a go at doing all the others. So for example, um, I might start with um, my re, or I might do my over. So I'm gonna start with re, and I'm going to put it before the prefix, before my root, retake. That is a word, because if you retake something, it means you do it again. Now I'm not going to do any more, because I want you to have a go at doing this, but I have given you some examples to start with first of all. Once you have done that, if you play the video and you can, we will have a look to see if you have got the same answers as what I have got. So I'd like you to just pause the video now, check have you got all of them correct? Have you got them, um, have you understood them? Now, if you have come across a word that you're not quite sure what, what it means or you've not heard of it before, um, please actually have a, now talk to your parents or your friends or have a look in the dictionary or on the internet to see what these words mean. So I want you to really understand what these words mean before you move on to the next part. So now we've got the same idea again. So I'd now like you to copy down these. And this time we've got different root words. So we've got construct, analyze, interpret, activate, emphasize, shape and direct. 
And I'd like you to have a go this time at doing um, the exact same um, with what you've just done with miss over re, d and um, dis to see which root words go with which prefixes. So have a go. This is a bit more of a challenge, so it will be a little bit more challenging for you to do. Um, but have a good go at this and then we'll have a look to see if you've got them right. And as I said before, um, if there's words there that you don't already know, have a think about what they mean first and use the internet or use the dictionary and then you'll be able to understand what it means. So if we have a look at the answers, so if you want to pause the video now, see have you got all the answers correct? Um, now, there might be some words that you haven't um, understood. So as I've just said, make sure you please do understand these before moving on to today's task. OK, so before moving on to the lesson today, what I'd like you to have a go at doing is using your understanding of what you've just understood from the past um, few slides on the different meanings and the different words that you can use. I'd now like you to write a glossary. Now, a glossary is a bit like a dictionary. It's where you explain um, what a word means. So I'd like you to select at least five words. If you select, if you've learnt more, please use more. Um, and I'd like you to explain what these different words mean. So for example, if you didn't know what the word misshaped me meant, please have a look in a dictionary now or have a look on the internet um, to help understand, develop your understanding. And then I'd like you to write the subheading glossary on a piece of paper. On the next line, write um, the name, the word that you're looking at and then underneath to show your explanation. So just something like this. So for example, you might write glossary, you could do it as a title or as a subheading, then as your subheading misshaped and underlined to say um, what it means. So misshaped means something that is shaped badly, it may not look right. So something nice and clear to show your understanding of the different words. So again, you might need to use a dictionary to help you or alternatively, you could use the internet to search for what the word means. So oh, what do you notice about the layout of a waggle? So I'd like you to just have a quick look, a quick recap to what we discussed about the waggle, to think about what features we have, how we need to write it. So have a quick think, have a quick discussion, and then come back. So I'd like you to think about what is a narrator. So this was the example of what the narrator would say. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful young girl named Cinderella. She had two ugly stepsisters who were very cruel to her. So what do you think a narrator is and why do you think we have a narrator in a play? So have a think about that, have a discussion and then we'll have a look. So a narrator is a person who tells the events of a story without being a character in the story. So this person tells the audience a little bit more information about what the characters are doing, what might have happened already, a bit of background information, but they're not actually in the story. So you wouldn't actually see the narrator playing as a character. They just want somebody to tell the story a little bit more or give the audience a little bit more information. So what were the main events in your story? So we're going to have a look at them. We can now start to split these into scenes. So I'd like you to write the following and tell me what will be in each scene. So each scene is just a different part, a different main event, something that happens in a different setting, a different place. So for example, I've been looking at the Cinderella story. So my first scene will be at Cinderella's home. So this is um, in regards to, it could be all the way up to receiving the letter from the prince and um, to getting ready to go to the ball. Then my second scene um, will be where my fairy godmother comes. So obviously the scene might change slightly. The setting might be in a different place in the garden. Um, so this is obviously the next main event. So the steps have gone to the ball and the fairy godmother appears. My third scene will be where I, change to the next main event so where Cinderella arrives at the ball and then my final scene um, oh this part as well could include where she runs away from the ball and then my final scene my next main point would be where the prince is trying to find Cinderella and trying on at the glass slipper um, to see if it fits. So I'd like you to have a go at writing scene one and um, you might have more than four scenes you might have less than four scenes it depends on what your story is um, but if you can now have a go at breaking the main events down the main places where it will be set into your scenes and then we'll know to where to start next. So knowing what your characters were from yesterday's lesson when you were starting to think about um, who your characters were 
you're going to now have a go at writing the character. So first of all, can you write the title of the play that you are doing, the play script? So for example, mine would be Cinderella. Then I would like you to write the characters of the main characters in the story. Now, try not to put too many characters in because you'll, uh, it'll get a little bit complicated. Try and just keep to the main characters in the story. So for example, my characters will be, I will need a narrator, I will need Cinderella, stepmother, stepsister one and two, fairy godmother and the prince and then what you can do is you can draw a nice box around it so i'd like you to have a go at doing that now okay so now what i'd like you to do i'd like you to write the name of the story that you're going to be doing so for example mine is cinderella in the middle of your on the line and underline it so we can see where it is then once you have done that to write the box and um, with your characters in just like we've done on the previous slide and then can you write scene one so um just underneath and we underline that so it's really clear that that is the first scene you could also in brackets put where the scene is but you don't necessarily always have to and then i'd like you to leave the line and write the word narrator with a colon just as i have done there and then once you have done that um stop and come back to me so now we're going to have a look at what the narrator would say now. So the narrator is a person that introduces um, a, the next part of the story. It could be giving you a little bit of a background information about the characters. It could be telling you about something that's happening. So, for example, if we're looking at Cinderella, the narrator might start off at the very start saying, once upon a time, as because it's a fairy tale, um, once upon a time, there was a beautiful young girl named Cinderella. She had two ugly stepsisters who were incredibly cruel to her and forced her to complete all the disgusting chores in the house. So there we know that the narrator has told us that um, we're going to learn about a story about a girl called Cinderella who lived with her stepsisters and was always to do the chores. Let's have a look at Jack and, Bean Jack and the Beanstalk. So for the first part of the scene, so the narrator might say, obviously it's a, a, a fairy tale so we can start with Once Upon a Time. Once upon a time there was a small shy boy called Jack. He lived in a peaceful cottage with his loving mother. Jack and his mother were very poor. They had very little to live on. All they had was a dairy cow called Milky White. So we can see there that we know straight away that we're going to learn about Jack who lives with his mother who uh, don't have very much money and just have a cow as um, part of their home. So you can see that all our narrator does is just introduces what's what we're going to be learning about. So it introduces maybe your characters and a bit about their background, um, but it doesn't have to be too long. So now I'd like you to have a go at doing it yourself. So whatever story you're doing, whether it is one of the fairy tales that we've talked about or whether it's your own story you're going to make up, I'd like you now to just do the narrator. So just tell me what the narrator will say. Once you have done that, if you stop there, we're going to have a look at the next part before you continue to write your scene. OK, so here is an example of something that you might start to collate. So we've got obviously the scene one. We've got the narrator and what they've just said. Then we've got our other characters and what they're saying. Now, just before we go into telling you what what to include, I want you to have a look at the example here. What do you notice about this example? Can you see some other areas, some other features that you might be including? I'd like you to just have a think and a discuss and just to say, see what features can you really notice from this? OK, so you can also see some stage directions. So stage directions are just um, where the um, author has told the actor what to do so it's it's a movement it's an action that the um the the character is going to do so for example if we look at the stepsister she says did you clean the kitchen and as she's saying it she's pointing to the kitchen whereas stepsister one is pulling at her clothes going did you iron my clothes so it's given the the audience a little bit more to watch and a little bit more to see how people are feeling when they are doing this. So now what I'd like you to have a go at doing is for you to actually continue the conversation. So once your narrator has introduced um, the background of the characters or introduced the characters, you're now going to have a go at saying what your characters are actually going to say and what conversation they are going to have. 
So if you look at the setup of mine, I have made sure that every time a new person speaks, a new character speaks, they have started on the new line. Now, I always write the name of the character first, followed by a colon, and then I will write what they say. Um, now, you can also put some stage directions in, but they must be in brackets. And you can either choose for them to put the brackets with the stage directions in at the start so that they do the action first, um, or to do put the action at the end. Um, so, for example, if they wanted to whisper, you would probably put that first because you want them to whisper their words. So think about where those will be most appropriate. So I'd like you to have make the conversation now between your characters. Try and get it so um, you are really understanding and showing the events of the story and how the characters will be feeling and what they will be saying. And then you're going to write all the way up. The narrator might also say some little bits to add a little bit more extra detail in. Um, so I'd like you to have a go at doing this. Now, if you can write the first part, so you'll have the narrator, the characters, and you're going to write the whole of the first scene. Now, it might take you longer than today's lesson. You might want to spread each scene over two lessons, which is absolutely fine. Um, but I'd like you to write the first scene now up to the next main event. So in the case of Cinderella, this would be up to the point where Cinderella is left at home once her stepmother and, and her stepsisters go to the ball and just before the fairy godmother enters. So think about what your scenes are, think about what where your um, story is going to change to the next part. And I'd like you to write all the way up to that part today. I'd love to see your work on Seesaw, so please do put that on there and then I can give you some feedback as well.